What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, I wanted to go through some of the top new features contained inside of the new version of Twin Motion that was just released. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so first off, and um, I wouldn't consider this a feature necessarily, and I'm not sure when this changed either, but the Twin Motion license terms basically make Twin Motion free to use for individuals and businesses that make less than a million dollars in revenue in the last 12 months. That means this is a very attractive place for people to go to get a free rendering software that's basically full featured, not including the Twin Motion cloud. That's a very competitive thing for Epic Games to do and it makes Twin Motion very accessible. All right, and so first off, we now have the ability to assign a layer ID to different objects and the ability to export render layers. So the way that works is say you wanted these trees and the sky to be on their own layers, you can select the objects, right? So you can see this right here. Um, and in this case, we want painted vegetation too, which is the trees. If you go to the layer ID and enable this, you can set this to be on a layer. Then when you export an image, so we're just gonna pop into our media, select this image, and then go to export. Notice how you have the option in your export settings to export a sky and that first layer in here, like this. And so we're gonna select this image and we're gonna export it. And so notice how this exported these different layers as render masks in here that you can use for selection and masking out these things in Photoshop or another image editing program. And so then when you bring these into your photo editing software, you, you can use this as a mask in order to mask out parts of your image. So in this case, we've masked out our sky, but then we could add another image behind this, um, but we can use this in order to do quick masking in our image editing software. All right, so next up, we have a feature that I think is pretty underrated. So we're going to use this concrete cat statue model from Polyhaven. So basically there's a new slot added on your models in your materials. So if I sample this, notice I've got multiple different maps in here, but there's a slot in here for ambient occlusion. What ambient occlusion is going to do is it's going to allow you to download the ambient occlusion maps for materials and bring them in. So if I bring the texture in, and so in this case, I've downloaded the ambient occlusion map, which is basically a map that allows you to highlight the shadowed areas of your model. But if I bring this in, notice how if I adjust the intensity, what this is gonna do, and you can kind of see it happening down here, but it's basically going to emphasize your shadows more. So in your crevices, you can use the ambient occlusion map in order to add additional detail to make things look like they're even deeper and more three-dimensional and it's really easy to use. All right, so next up, we've got the improved fabric materials, and this is just a quick model that I created over in SketchUp, but basically what you can do is you can add a fabric material by clicking the little drop down on the corner here. You can pick fabric, and notice how when you add a fabric, and I'm gonna drag it on this surface right here, there's now an option in there to pick either a standard fabric material, which is gonna be like a carpet or whatever, um, or a thin material. So if we jump into thin material right here, notice what that's gonna do is that's going to create a material that allows light to go through. So this is great for like drapes and other things like that. So um, then you've got the ability, if you scroll down into the settings, you can adjust things like the thickness of the material, right? So you can make that thicker or or thinner. And so there's also an option down below to adjust the translucency. So notice how you can bring the translucency up or down, and that's going to allow more light through. Now there's an option for a translucency map, which I am assuming is how they're picking up this thin fabric material right now. I still need to track one of these down so that I can test this. I'm not sure where you look for a fabric opacity map, so I'm having trouble finding it, but theoretically you're able to achieve even more translucency on that thin material by using those maps. So um, if there's interest, we can try to track that down a little further, but one of the other cool things about this is if we hop up into the color right here, so say I make this like a red color or something like this, notice how you're getting that kind of like red reflection where that fabric is. So you can actually use a fabric material in order to allow light through in order to create an effect like this one, or really you can achieve better effects with this, but it is still pretty cool the way that the light is actually kind of like going through that cloth. And notice how that is live, meaning 
if you make an adjustment to where the sun is, it's going to adjust where the light is coming through that material. So this allows you to create some really cool kind of translucent materials inside of Twin Motion. And I think it can do more. I'm just looking for the proper maps in order to test this further. So I'm going to give a feature honorable mention here, which is the new animation sequencing tool. So basically this new sequence media type, as best as I can tell, anyway, is it allows you to do a lot more with your camera keyframes. So it gives you the ability to do a much better job of kind of keyframing where your camera is. And it also allows you to manage imported animation files. So you can see this kind of cool example of how they're setting up this action camera in order to follow along with this animation inside of Twin Motion. The reason I'm giving it honorable mention and not really talking about it too much more is as far as I know, this only works with bringing in animated files that were animated in another software. So in this case, these cars were animated using another software and then brought in. But I don't think there's any way, at least right now, in order to keyframe the movements and animations directly inside of Twin Motion. Now, I know this gets a little bit weird anyway with like animating rolling wheels and stuff like that, but just being able to like keyframe the movements of the objects, which I don't believe there's a way to do right now, would be extremely powerful. Now, they did add the ability and they talk about it a little bit down below. I think they may have an um, example on their, uh, they, they may have an example on one of their videos as well. They did give you the ability to parent animators together, meaning you can combine rotations and translations into one video. For me, I'm not really super fired up about that because it's still kind of complicated in the way that it works. So they're making good movements with the animations, but it's not quite to the point yet where it allows me to do what I would like to do directly inside of Twin Motion. But leave a comment down below, let me know what you think. All right, so now we're on to my two favorite new features inside of this version. So um, first off, you've got the ability to place objects by paths or in a straight line. So say for example, I hop into this populate tab right here. We're gonna create a place. We're gonna pick spacing. What spacing is gonna do is it's gonna allow you to dictate models and then place them in a line. So say for example, I dragged a couple cars in here. So maybe the sedan, maybe another sedan like this. What this is gonna do is this is gonna give us the ability to place a path. So I'm just gonna click and then click again and then right click. And notice what that's gonna do is that's going to place objects along the path. Now you can adjust things in here. So you can adjust this so that it has a random order and notice how you can adjust the seed in order to set what these cars are, but then you can also pick those cars. So I'm just going to do a shift click to select all of these. And what I'm going to do is notice how there's a rotation offset. So when I pick the rotation offset, what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to set the rotation of each one of these objects. And so you can also adjust the spacing, though this one actually did a pretty good job, so I don't necessarily need that. But notice how I could use this in order to quickly generate things like cars along paths. Another interesting application for this is also having the ability to place things like railings. Now what this isn't going to do, and let's go ahead and let's create this while I'm talking, what this isn't going Going to do is I'm gonna look for a rail right here and let's say we wanted it to be this safety rail um, it's not going to be ideal but I think it's a good example of what this can do so I'm just going to pick an edge so we'll just kind of fly in here like this pick this edge and we can select this path right like this and if I right click out of it I can place these and then I just want to take these objects and I want to rotate them all 90 degrees like this then it's going to give me the ability to adjust my count. And in this case, I actually want that to be 270 degrees because I want them going the other way. But notice how I can adjust this count up. Oh, it's going to add more and more of these. Now, where this does get a little bit weird, though, is say that you were to try to create a new one um, that's got like this modular guardrail, for example. What you're going to run into, and we'll create a new one right here. We'll just place, place place, if you tried to drop a guardrail in here, even if we rotate it and we bring that count down, now there are options in here to do things like align with the surface. So that kind of gets you close in here, but it's not going to bend and deform your objects in order to follow the surfaces. So you do have to be a little bit careful with this. You can kind of adjust 
the way that this goes in here though which is cool so you're not going to be able to just kind of deform this along the surface but you can use it to place objects along paths really easy and then the other tool that i really like is the area function so this is probably my favorite new function in version 2024 what it does is it allows you to dictate an area like this so we'll just click in order to close it down notice how it's showing me a preview of what we could drop in here and so this is going to allow you to drop objects so say for example we wanted to add some rocks in here i could drop a couple rocks in like this and what it's going to do is it's going to randomly place those rocks and so what we could do first off we can randomize the placement like this right we could also move the whole thing up or down if you didn't like the way this looked but you could also set some fall off around the edges. You could set the spacing between the objects. So if I bring the spacing down, notice how it's gonna place more rocks in here, like this. Then you could also randomize your rotation in here, like this. And you could also align it, which is gonna align it with the surface. But the cool thing about that is it's automatically filling in that space with objects, which means like, uh, which means that populating spaces is a lot easier than it used to be. And you can also adjust these by clicking, moving these points like this in order to set where those additional placement points are going to be. Really like this function, maybe even more than the paint function because it allows you to be more precise with the areas that you generate. But from a placement, standpoint but this is an excellent tool for randomly placing objects inside of twin motion all right so that's where i'm in this video leave a comment below let me know if you want me to get in depth with any of these features i just love having that conversation with you guys if you do want to learn to use twin motion for rendering i've linked my course in the notes down below but as always thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and i'll catch you in the next video thanks guys